just carry on in that vein today and let's just have some Holy Ghost Church today. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't know about you, but I came to have church today. Now I want you to turn to that person that you thought you were going to say it and then you kind of backed out a little bit. Turn to them now. Turn to the person on the other side and say, God's got something for you today. Yeah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen, amen, amen. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We're continuing, amen, today. If you were here last week, we started our series, Now What? How many were here last week and you enjoyed that phenomenal word from our bishop last week? Would you raise your hands, clap your hands, just kind of let us know you were here. Wasn't that a great word from the Lord? Amen. Amen. Such a, such a great word. We're going to be continuing. Amen. Today. And then Bishop will be back next Sunday for the third week of that, that series as well. We're going to be kind of talking. Uh, well, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to do a lot of talking. <laughs> Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to try to talk. Hallelujah. My wife says you have no problems with talking. Amen. But you know, sometimes when something gets on you, amen, it's hard not to get excited. Hallelujah. Especially when you know where Jesus brought you from. It's kind of hard to have dead church when you know where you should be, but you know where you are today and you know why you're here. I don't know about you, but does anybody know why you're here today? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But we're going to jump into this word today. I, I feel um, the Holy Ghost in this place. Um, someone was, was picking at me and they said, Brother Winslow, you always say, I feel the Holy Ghost. And, uh, you know, that's a good thing. Hallelujah. Praise God, right? How many are thankful you can feel the Holy Ghost? I don't know about you, but the day I can't feel him... Amen. I've got to get in an altar so I can find him. Because I got to feel the presence of the Lord. I've got to know that he's real. I've got to have this word not just be letters on a page. But I've got to let this word come out of the page and get in my spirit. The Bible says it is, it is alive. And when this word gets in you, something has to shake and something has to move. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, Brother Tovar, I, I feel like punching the devil upside the head this morning. <laughs> Brother Tovar said, you're going to beat the devil up. And you're gonna, he started naming the devil's kin folks. And he was going down the list. And I just looked at him. I had to stop him. Now he was kind of starting to preach. And uh, I said, Brother Tovar, we're going to take the whole family out today. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to just take the devil and all his family out. Somebody say amen. Amen. We're going to be talking about how God empowers us. But, but I, felt, I felt the Holy Ghost just kind of, kind of move me a little bit to a different side of empowerment. And I, I felt God directing me to the story of David and Goliath. I kind of felt like the Lord was telling me that, that today is a day to kill some giants. Well, that was about 50% of you. I've come to tell somebody that I feel in the Holy Ghost that this is a great day to destroy some giants that have been intimidating us, have been trying to rob us, have been trying to take our miracle, have been, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, you better warn somebody. Tell somebody if they're brand new and you've never seen them before, turn to someone and say, if you've never been here, you better get ready. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Amen. But I felt the Holy Ghost. You know, you, know um, uh, you, you can deny it if you want to. But I promise you, if you were truthful today, you probably could confess that you've got something in your life that you don't want there. Yeah. I have yet to find anybody that can tell me that they don't fight anything. Even folks that got that fake smile on their face are fighting something. Fighting something. I'm going to be nice today. I ain't going to pick on nobody. But you know who I'm talking about. I've never found anyone who's never fought something. And I just feel like the Holy Ghost, because you know the Bible tells us in the book of Acts, and I'll let you sit in a moment, but don't get too comfortable. I'm a participation preacher. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, hallelujah. But the Bible tells us in the book of Acts, tells us, uh, 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 talks about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. You know, it was a bad day on that third day, and we talked about that two weeks ago, didn't we? That when Jesus rose from the dead, it was a bad day for hell. Because hell was planning a party. Hell thought it had gotten rid of Jesus. And then Jesus comes on the scene for 40 days, Brother Lucas, and begins to perform miracles and begins to talk to his disciples. And then the Bible says he tells them that I must go and I must go to my father. And hell was getting ready to have another party because it thought I'm getting rid of him again. But the Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, yes, they were gathered together yes, sir. in one accord. Amen. And they were praying. And the Bible says there came a sound yeah. from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. Yeah. And the Bible says the Holy Ghost fell on them. You see, the devil had plans. And twice, God messed up those plans. And I've come to tell someone, I know the devil has plans for you, but you get ready. God is about to mess up the plans the devil had for you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you lift up your hand? I, f I feel the presence of God right now. And I want us, just before we jump into this, I, I want us just to lift up our hands. We, we need God. We need Him desperately. Father, we need You. Your Spirit is moving in this place. Your Spirit is speaking to us. And Lord, if we come in this house and we, we hear just knowledge if all we get is just knowledge and understanding which we need that because without it we don't even know who we worship but god we we've got to get beyond just knowing about you we've got to get into a place where we allow you to move because this thing is an intimate thing this thing is a personal thing Father, I'm praying in that name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, that you would move through this house and that you would give us the faith to kill some giants today. Some things that have us bound have got to come down. Some things that have us bound, they've got to come down. In the name of Jesus. Somebody put your hands together. Hallelujah. We praise your holy name, Jesus. Come on, just for 30 seconds, would you just give God some high praise? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Brother Tim, don't go too far. I, I feel like God's going to move us right into a time of altar. Yep. In a time of a time of God doing something but before we get there I want you to turn with me because I want you to see this 
Amen. Wasn't the praise and worship just absolutely awesome this morning? Hallelujah. You know, I, I'm old enough and I'm young enough to love that song, How Great Thou Heart. And I know some of our younger folks probably never heard that song before. But no idea. There we go. One of them said, I have no clue what that song was. <laughs> but I love that song, How Great Thou Art. And uh, we're going to find out how great God is today. Would you turn to 1 Samuel? 1 Samuel. We're going to look at verse number 17. 1 Samuel 17. We're going to turn to verse number 43. I'll tell you what, go to verse number 42. 17 in verse number 42. When you're there, would you just elbow your partner next to you and just say, I'm there, are you? Amen. Verse number 42. And when the Philistine, or the Philistine, looked about... And Saul David, he disdained him. I'm going to tell you, the devil doesn't like you. That's a positive way to start, right? Yeah. Because some folks think the devil likes them. But the devil don't like anything you do. The devil doesn't like you being in church today. The devil doesn't like you worshiping God. And I'll tell you another thing he doesn't like, that you know there's only one God. Yeah. I'm not going to preach this, but I got to say it, Brother Felipe. I got to say it. Deuteronomy 6 and 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is what? Lord. One Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the devil does not like the fact that you know that he is one. Yeah. The devil doesn't like it that you're in a church that believes that unless you're born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Am I preaching to that kind of church today? devil really does this ain't in my message but i feel it right now the devil really doesn't like it that we believe and we preach what the book of acts says that unless you repent of your sins you'll never see jesus that if you're never baptized into the name of jesus christ ah i felt a snag right there I said, unless you're baptized in the water, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. And then the Bible tells us, unless you're filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Now I'm going to yell it out. You yell it back to me. How do we know that we're filled with the Holy Ghost? Come on. Come on I'm preaching in an apostolic church. How do you know? I tell you, I'm so glad I go to a truth church. Yes, we do. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise God. Praise God. And the devil really doesn't like that you worship the one true God of Israel. He doesn't really like you that you know that his name is Jesus. He really doesn't like it that you praise God. He, he really, listen, let's just get right down to it. There's nothing you do that, that the devil approves of. Nope. The Bible says he goes to and fro looking whom he may destroy. Yeah. He don't want you getting a blessing. He don't want you getting a victory. And he sure don't want you killing no giant. But I've got a word from God today that I really don't care what the devil thinks. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I said I really don't care what the devil thinks. My God is able. My God is able. And I just feel like if I hold on long enough in this service, that there's some things in my life that God is about to tear down. Somebody clap your hands under God. Yeah. yeah. Praise God. Amen. Let's try to get through these. I got five verses to read you. And I don't even think I finished one yet. Let's try to get through this. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Hallelujah. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth. Oh, young folks, do you know how powerful you are? My goodness. I wish I was young. 
Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say praise God. Praise God. And, 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 and Rudy and, and, and a fair countenance and the Philistines said unto David, am I a dog? Now, you know, in, in that culture, that's about the lowest thing you could call someone was a dog. I mean, that's fighting words right there, right? That's, that's uh, me and you, we fist to have some words outside. You call me a dog. We go, we're going to have some words. And, and, and Goliath uh, looks at who comes out to fight him. Who, who's the challenger? Who is the people of God? Because really, it's not about Goliath, and it's really not about David. The real picture is this is about the devil, and this is about the true God of Israel. Yeah. Listen, if you're not careful, you're going to think that this battle is about you. But I'm going to tell you, it's really not about you. Not about. The enemy's not really fighting me. The enemy's really not fighting you. He's trying to destroy the confidence and the faith you have in your God. This battle is not about flesh and blood. Yep. Yeah. I remember a long time ago when the Holy Ghost showed that to me and I realized this ain't personal, this ain't about me, this is about God. The enemy is about trying to destroy the kingdom. He's not trying to take me out, he's trying to take out my God. But I read the back of the book and I know how this thing ends and I understand that there's a day coming when we're all gonna rise in glory. Praise God, praise God. Amen. Yeah. And uh, he, he looked at him and he said, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. It never works. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. Didn't really work, did it? Then said David to the Philistine, and here's where I really want us to focus on how God empowers us. Because I'm telling you, God has some power for us. And the worst thing we can ever do is to walk this life with God and not realize the potential and the power that we hold. I'm going to be real nice right here, but the worst thing I've ever seen is a Holy Ghost filled apostolic who does not recognize the power that they have. Yeah. Turn to somebody and say, I got power. Got power. Hallelujah. We've got power. David said unto the, uh, he said, come unto me, uh, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed your flesh. And David said to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword. Now, now listen, I, I'm trying real, real hard to get through this, but there is so much. And if you need to sit down, if you feel faint, you please sit down. If you feel like you got to sit, you're not going to offend me. I promise. I'm in the mode now. I'm here. But let me tell you something. Did you ever notice that? that the Philistine called him out by name. But David never called him by name. Because you know what? You got to get to a point when you don't look at the devil and start giving labels and how he is and what he is. You just need to look at him and say, listen, you're nothing but a hill I'm going to climb. You're nothing but a bad day I'm going to get over. You're nothing but a small struggle I'm going to get through. Some of you just give your devil too much credit. And I think it's time for us to look our giant in the face and say, this is going to be the day that I destroy you hallelujah hallelujah somebody say this is the day, this is the day. he said uh, then David said to the Philistine thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies he was setting the stage to let him know it's not just my God but it's their God too in other words if I don't get the job done buddy you got another folks behind me that will follow me up I've come to tell somebody you're not in this alone Hallelujah! come on I said you're not in this alone 
We're in this together. We're in this together. And if you're weak one day, I'll be strong. And the days I'm weak, you'll be strong. And we'll be able to tell the devil, you better watch out. The Lord of the host of Dallas First Church is here. That was worth a mission right there. Y'all want us to preach on? Okay. Brother Shambo, we doing all right? I love you, Brother Shambo. Amen. Amen. Let, let us look at this. He said, the, the armies of Israel whom thou hast defied. It's kind of setting the stage to get ready, buddy. You're about to count down to your last breath. <laughs> because anytime you start bringing God into the picture, the countdown begins. <laughs> Someone say amen. amen. Watch this. Verse number 46 is where I want to take my title. I want you to look at it quickly. Here we go. You ready? If you're not, just say you are. Make me feel better. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Verse number 46. This day. Not tomorrow. Not Monday. Not Sunday night. Not at 3 o'clock. Right now. <laughs> he said... This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. He was letting his giant know that I am not here to play games with you. Yeah. Not here to play games. Listen, you can sit if you want to. I'm already preaching, but I like when you stand with me. I've come to try to pull somebody out of the degradation and the lies of the enemy and try to tell you it's time for us to stop playing games with our giants. And it's time to tell our giants today, 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 you will be delivered into my hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a shame for the Holy Ghost to fall on the day of Pentecost and for us to experience that awesome gift of God and then for us not to use it. He said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But what did he say? And power. He said, when you get this, you're going to get power. power. You know what that word is in the Greek? Dunamis. You know what dunamis is? It's where we get our English word dynamite. So let me just say it like this. What he was saying is, I'm going away and something greater than I. Now listen, I don't know about you, but, but it's hard to imagine something greater than Jesus. Yeah. But he said, I'm going to give you something greater than I. I must go away. And they said, what are you going to give us? He said, you go to that place and you tarry. And they're going to get the promise of the Father. And the Bible says that you're going to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. But you're going to get power with it. It's dunamis. It's dynamite. Now listen to me. Some of us don't feel too dynamite, do we? You know, when we were growing up, we used to get these things called M80s. Anybody know what an M80 is? Some of you troublemakers know what I'm talking about. Don't incriminate yourself, Brother Shambo. Hallelujah. <laughs> How many know what an M80 is? It's like a quarter stick of a dynamite or something like that. And uh, I'm not going to tell you where we used to get them from, but <laughs> we, we'd bring them. I lived in California, if that gives you a clue, where we went and got them. And... Uh, <laughs> Some of y'all really in trouble. Y'all like, try not to let nobody know y'all used to blow stuff up. Are my kids in here? <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'd get these little M80s. Folks, these weren't firecrackers from the fire stand, <laughs> cracker stand. It was a quarter stick of a dynamite. Blow your arm off <laughs> kind of stuff. And uh, we used to get those. And, and I remember the first time I got one, I thought, you're kidding me. What's this going to do? 
And they said, man, that's a quarter stick of a dynamite. And I, 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 said, I said, okay, I know what a dynamite stick can do, but, but this little old thing, what's that going to do? And I'm going to tell you what. <sighs> Brother Hayden, don't listen to what I'm going to say right now. We got the, the man in the house. Hallelujah. Uh, someone else did this, not me. Does that help? <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> he probably gets that all the time. It wasn't me. My friend. And, uh, man, we, we lit that thing in a safe zone away from everything. And uh, we were running tests to see if it was dangerous for the children in the neighborhood. And, and I remember when that thing blew up, Brother Lucas, the, the, the corner of it was a little cap, and that bad boy flew off. I don't know what it is about God always messing with my eyes. Y'all know my tithe story. But that little cat flew off and hit me in the eyeball. And I started watering up. And they said, what's wrong with you, man? I said, oh, nothing. And this is water. And, and I mean, it blew nothing up. It, it blew to smithereens and shattered it. And then I, I sat there watered up in the beauty of the awesomeness of this corner of a, of a dynamite stick. And all of a sudden it dawned on me that it doesn't take a full stick of dynamite to do damage. I'm already preaching and some of y'all ain't even there yet. I realize, and you've heard it before, and if you hadn't, I'm going to say it again. I've heard it all my life. Uh, uh, dynamite comes in small packages, but, but don't be fooled. There's still some power in that little package. And, and David, the Bible says he was a young man. He, he was not the stature of Goliath. He, he didn't have the weaponry of a Goliath. He didn't have the abilities of a Goliath. And matter of fact, the Bible says he was tending his father's sheep and his daddy told him why don't you go take your brother something to eat and he walks up and there is Goliath you know you can just be going about your day not expecting a giant and a giant will just happen to make its way into your life Maybe I'm preaching to some folks that don't understand fighting giants, but I want to preach to those of you that can say, Preacher, I was just going about my business and life hit me upside the head. I wasn't expecting cancer, but here it is. I wasn't expecting poverty to hit my home, but here it is. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter if a giant appears in your life. You got an answer. You got an answer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I had to stand up there just to get a little taller than you. I've been there. You know, you walk through life and, and, and everything's going great. You know, there's no door that says on it, giant. I'm going to preach to some real folks today. Those of you who don't really care, you just keep, you know, letting your giant kick you around. Let him just walk in your house and kick you around. Just let him look at your kids and kick your kids around. How about you? You kick my kids, we're going to fight. <laughs> right? We're going to fight. Someone said, but you got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will wait. I'm sorry, Bishop, if you're listening. I edit I will lay hands on you in the Holy Ghost because <laughs> then brother Hayden can get me out because I know people now <laughs> I'm sorry I'm gonna use it hallelujah <laughs> but some of us we, we you know we th th there's no door that says giant and honestly you can sit when you want but you can stand I like that but there's no door that says giant on it. Uh, sis, you, your testimony. I mean, how many were here when they did our testimonies on the screen? Just, if you weren't here um, a few Sundays ago, we did testimonies and Brother Christian and, and, and Sister Tony's testimony and, and just, I mean, just bl blows your mind of things that people go through. And I had no idea the 
the battle for her own life, a stage four cancer. And, 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 and I'm sure the devil probably told her every day, you ain't going to make it through this. And you know the story, and I hope she can testify that story again. That was powerful. But, but, but she's cancer free. That's been several, several years ago. But I, I, I tell you that, that, that she didn't wake up one Sunday or one Monday and there was a door that said giant uh, uh, below it, cancer. You, you know, we're not often given a time of preparation for the giants that come in our life. And, and they, they, they just seem to be there. When we don't expect them, they're there. The phone call comes and we're not expecting it. And, 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 and the phone call from the school comes and there's tragedy or the phone call comes. Is this okay? Because we live in a world that's messed up. And I heard a preacher, Brother Marino, that said, we, we, we didn't, we're not living on a cruise ship. We're on a battleship. Yeah. And, 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 and we live in a life where there's pain. And listen to me, folks. If, if you have never felt pain, then you hold on. Life's going to knock on your door. And it's not going to call ahead. It's not going to send anything in the mail. You're not going to get, oh, you got mail. Dated myself right there. And the enemy's tactic is, I'll get you when you're just coming to see your brothers. When you're the overlooked one, just tending sheep. Now, isn't it amazing, the one to challenge? Because the Bible says that nobody would challenge him. Now, you got to get this, because some of you really believe that if your last name isn't Winslow, you can't kill giants. Some of you think if your last name's not Foster, you can't kill giants. Some of you think if you don't have a Pentecostal pedigree that's 40 generations deep, that you can't kill giants. But the Bible tells us that twice a day, Goliath came out and challenged Israel. For 40 days. Are y'all still with me? For 40 days, Goliath came out twice a day and would challenge and say, is there not somebody who can fight me? And here's old David. Woo, smells like sheep. You know, stinks. I'm just a nobody and just, you know, just, yeah, I mean, yeah, who am I? And okay, dad, you know, because my brothers, they're the warriors. They're the fighters. They're the ones that are out there doing battle for God. And here I am. I'm just, I'm, I'm nobody. I'm too young. That's a lie from hell. I should have got every young person sitting over here right there to say amen. I'll try it again because some of y'all weren't listening. The greatest lie from hell is you got to wait till you're a certain age for God to use you. Come on, young people at youth convention, y'all go crazy. Come on, this, this is almost as good as youth convention preaching. So watch this, David, David, is this okay? Visitors, is this okay? Any of our guests, are you enjoying yourself? They're like, oh my Lord, is Brother Foster coming back? <laughs> so watch David. David, you know, he just, Bible says he was, he was GQ. You know, he's, he, you know, he had his suit on. He looked good. And he come walking in there just going to, you know, deliver food. And he walks up and he hears this noise, because that's all the devil is anyways, is noise. <laughs> that's all he is, just noise. And Goliath is, ah, is there not someone who will fight me? And you got to see this, Saul is over there shaking. <laughs> you know, he's, he's got the pedigree. You know, he's the man and he's over there, oh, and, and you know, we got, we got David's brothers, oh, and everybody's shaking. And David says, do we not have a cause? Yeah. What he was saying is, do, do you not have enough faith? 
that you're really going to let this giant talk to you like that. And I'm telling some folks today, I felt it all week in the Holy Ghost that some of us, we need to realize that God has empowered us, that God has given us power, that we don't have to sit back and allow the devil and the enemy and our sickness and our trouble to dictate to us what we're going to do. We got something in us. Yep. I said we got something in us. We are empowered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so David walks up and all of a sudden his whole day changed. I've had that phone call come before. I've had that text message come before. Is it all right if I just kind of get where we're at? It's okay. I've been there before. When you start up on the mountain, <laughs> but you end up in the valley. The Bible says that Gath and, and all the fighters and all Goliath was on one mountain. The children of Israel are on the other mountain. They came together in the valley to fight. You're not always going to stay on the mountain. Sometimes to protect your mountain, you got to go into a valley. Well, I'm going to try it over here. Let me try it. Y'all, y'all did real good over here. Let's, I said sometimes. See, we want to stay on the mountain of our blessing. But sometimes God's got to bring you down to where the fight is to protect what he's already given you. And if you're not careful, you'll think this battle is because you did something wrong or God's not with you. Nah, there's a devil who wants to kill, destroy your mountain. And sometimes I got to struggle a little bit to protect what God's given me. Hallelujah. The fight was in the valley, but the blessing and everything they wanted was on the mountain. Hallelujah. So David comes up, and David's just, you know, he just, he just got it. He, all he's got is his McDonald's bag. And he's just, he just, he just, taking, he's just taking food to his brothers. That's the only thing he's doing. But I love the way God is, because you know the story, and if you don't, let me tell you it. He looks at the giant, and it wasn't just that he said, my God is a God who will deliver you in my hand. It wasn't just this, I'm just going to declare something. Blab it and grab it. Because I'm going to tell you something, if you ain't got nothing to back up your, your blab, you ain't grabbing nothing. See, that's why some of you are frustrated because all you do is blab, 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 and blab, and when you don't grab it, you think God's failed you. But you got to have something behind that. It's more than just say it, claim it, get it. You got to find something in you that has faith that says, I know what God can do, and when I. And when I look at my giant, when I declare to him this day, God's going to deliver you in my hands. I got something behind what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to get real boring for a second. Some of you probably already think I am, but I'm going to confess I'm going to get real boring for just a second. If you don't pray... You can blab it all day. Ooh. That sounded good, Brother Marino. Put that on a bumper sticker. Put that on Facebook, like Brother Holland would say. If, if you ain't praying, you got nothing behind it. Now, you can walk in here and declare to the giants, you're going to come down, and all you got is I attended a church service. And you're going to find that devil going to whop you upside the head. Because if we're not in the prayer room, I told y'all I wasn't going to be real excited right here. We'll get back over there. 
We'll get back to killing giants, but I had to take a little side note right here because I feel some of us are frustrated because we feel like God ain't doing anything. And I'm going to tell you what, if there's an issue, it ain't God. So I like to think that when David told the giant, today is the day, this day, he understood, I've been here before. Y'all know the story. If you don't, let me tell you. He said, uh, you think I'm afraid of you, but let me tell you what happened just a few months ago. He said, you know, I was just kind of taking care of the sheep. And out came the lion. And on that day, he wasn't as big as bad as you. But on that day, he was big and bad. Because up until then, I had never faced nothing like that. Never fought anything like that. But he said, you know, I took care of that. He starts going through what God has done. I've had the devil try to make me forget what God has done. I remember one time I was, you can be seated. When y'all stand like that, y'all make me preach harder. I remember I was facing a battle. How many's ever been through a battle? And uh, I was driving down the road and... Uh, how many's ever been in the mully grubs? I told someone this one time, I don't even know what a mully grub is. But I was in it. And I was just kind of, how many's ever, now if you're not going to be real, um, that's all right. I'll preach to the real folks today. But how many of you will tell me, you know, I, Brother Winslow, I, I've been in places where if God didn't show up, there was no way out. Now listen, if you can buy your way out, I'm, I'm not preaching to you today. If you can, uh, if your last name can get you out of trouble, I'm not preaching to you today. If you know political people and things, they can get you out of this and that, I'm not preaching to you today. If you're so smart, you can talk your way out of stuff, I'm not preaching to you today. But I'm preaching to some folks today that you got things in your life. You, you got a mess in your life. And you can say, preacher, if God don't bring me out of this, I ain't coming out of this. Got anybody like that in the house? You know what I'm talking about? Kind of one of those things that <sighs> takes your breath away. Kind of hits you in the gut. Kind of one of those things where you start questioning God. Well, I was there, and I was driving down the road, and all of a sudden, you know, it's kind of not a good thing to put country music on when you're not in a good mood. I don't know why I said that. Let's move on. That just makes things sadder. Somebody's dog was taken, wife left him, took the truck. All right, let's move on. But I kind of put some music on. And, uh, man, I started feeling bad. And, you know, the devil's real good about wiping out all memory of how good God is. Because he knows if you ever tap into the power of God, if you ever tap into this Holy Ghost, he knows he's in trouble. And I began to tell God all about my troubles. And for a split moment, I literally forgot all the things God has done. Because if you're not careful, you'll forget what God has already done in your life. You'll forget the bear. You'll forget the lion. You'll forget all the chaos. You'll forget the things God's brought you through. 
Because the purpose is for God to, or the enemy to, to get you in a place where you are facing a giant and you've got nothing to grab a hold of and to say, I've got nothing I can throw. I've got nothing I can stand on. And you stand there and say, I don't know if God can do this. And I remember I began to weep. I began to say, God, I don't know about this. Not one time was I thinking about what he's already done so many times in my life. I wasn't thinking about the time that I was driving and, 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 and my family was asleep and, 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 and I fell asleep. And I've already told April this, so I'm good. I remember I was driving and I fell asleep at the wheel for just a moment. And I remember, do y'all know how real God is? I just kind of feel this pull that some of you, you just kind of like get this over with so we can go eat. And, and you're not understanding how powerful God really is. I'm telling you, you serve a God that is, is powerful. You, you serve a God that right there where you are, doesn't matter what you face, doesn't matter what, I'm telling you, we don't serve a God who is, is in an image that you can't feel and he can't be touched. You serve a God that can be felt. You serve a God that can be touched. And I remember I fell asleep and... You, you can think what you want with it, but, but I'm just going to tell you what happened. I felt something grab the steering wheel. And when I say I felt, it wasn't a twitch. I felt something grab the steering wheel and pull back. And when I did, I opened my eyes, and we were that close from going under a diesel. I'm talking like front bumper hood was that close from we were going under it and I felt something grab that wheel and pull back and and I knew that God had entered that car now you can think what you want to and you can deny God intervenes and, and you can deny we serve a God like that if you want to but let me just go ahead and tell you something you better be careful what you deny God can do or you might find you're on Goliath's side and not David's side because Goliath defied the God of Israel. But David said, anything's possible. Yeah. The enemy had me forget the time that I was in the bedroom praying. And I walked out of the bedroom. And April comes to me and she's, she's got this pale look on her face. And something's not right. And, and I immediately knew something's not right. Something's wrong. And she looked at me and she said, I can't breathe. And she said, my heart. And I, I feel faint and just dizziness. And she said, I, I can't my heart. And it was just palpitating and just missing beats. And, and I laid my hand on her. And I could tell something was not right. right folks I didn't have time to go fast That's why some of us, if we wait till Goliath shows up and we ain't fast one day in our life and we haven't prayed one hour in our life, you better believe the devil's going to take control. And folks, I didn't know what else to do. I laid my hands on her. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, because there's power in the name of Jesus. Now listen to me. I don't care how long we say it and how many times we call his name. There's still power in the name of Jesus. I laid hands on her. I still don't know how to pray right. I'm not there yet. I ain't achieved nothing. But you know what? When you're desperate and you got some faith, you don't have to say nothing pretty. Because God's not impressed by your words anyways. Come on, I said God ain't impressed by how you pray and what you say. 
He wants to know, are you for real? <laughs> He'll take somebody that doesn't know what to say, doesn't know Pentecostal theology, but in their heart they say, I'm desperate, I'm desperate, and he will empower you. If you call on the name of Jesus, I'm preaching to somebody right now that there's power in the name of Jesus. I know they're recording it, but I'm going to stand up here so everybody in Dallas sees me and hears me. There's no power in Muhammad. No. Curl back if you want to, but I've come to tell you, there's no power in Confucius. There's no power in Buddha. The Bible says there is only one name under heaven given to men whereby they must be saved. It's the name of Jesus. And I've come to tell you the devil fears. Oh, oh my God, my God. Don't you tell me we're like everybody else. We are not like everybody else. I ain't pointing fingers. I'm not pointing nobody out. Don't you do it either. But I ain't brothers with everybody. Not everybody's my sister. I'm telling you right now, you better hear me. If you don't confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, we are not the same. Come on, I'm preaching about how God empowers us. You want to know how God empowers you to take down your giants? It's when you get the revelation of the mighty God in Christ. Hey, I ain't talking about DFC. I ain't talking about United Pentecostal Church. They don't save you. The organization we're a part of does not make my way to heaven. I remember when my daddy told me before I got my license with the United Pentecostal Church. I remember when my daddy talked to me. He said, son, why do you want a license with the UPC? And I said, first, Daddy, I want you to know, God called me to preach, not the UPC. But I'm telling you, this church, the name doesn't save you. Bishop Foster doesn't save you. Gordon Winslow doesn't save you. Your mama can't save you. Your grandmama can't save you. When you fight that giant, there is but only one hope for you, and that is Jesus. I still believe you can call on that name. I'm just a little bit old fashioned. I believe that when you call the name of Jesus, something changes. Come on, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to catch on to what everybody's doing right now. It's the name, it's the name, it's the name. The name of Jesus. It's the name that empowers us. I didn't know what else to do. I just said, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh. 
Oh, there's something moving in this place right now. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus empowers us. I was in a prayer or in a revival service. Stay with me. Don't sit. We're we're about to wrap this up because I can feel God is about to do something right here. We were preaching and this has been probably 10 years ago. Brother Lucas, I was only preaching. I was 27 years old when I first started preaching. I ran from God for a long time. People would say, you're going to be like your daddy. You're going to walk in his shoes. You got anointing. And, and I'd do just about everything I could but curse him. I just, I just didn't want anything to do with anything. And I'd been preaching probably about, oh, just, just a few months. And uh, I was in Jackson, Mississippi, and in Vicksburg, Mississippi, about 45 minutes away, a pastor called and said, I want you to come preach a revival. And, oh, I thought, oh, Lord, you know, I, don't, <laughs> you know, I just kind of signed up for this just a couple months ago. And uh, just kind of really started digging roots in. I, I ran from God, didn't have a prayer life. You know, I was like some folks that just, my prayer life consisted at 1045 to 1230. And really, even that was just the people around me praying, really was how I would just kind of cash in. And I had just began to pray and fast and really just digging into the life of ministry. And if anything I could say to those who are in ministry in the house, get a prayer life. Get, Get a prayer life. I, I, I used to try hard, Brother Lucas, I, I used to try hard to get beautiful messages, and they never were. And, 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 and then I discovered that, that you know, if, if you can just tap into the power of God, yeah. allow Him to empower you. The Bible says in Corinthians that the kingdom of God is not of words, but it's of power. This is a power thing. We need teaching. We need the word of God. But if all we got is cute messages and just words, but no power, we, 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 we're going to be defeated by our giant. And I went to this church to preach and my, my daddy, you're, you're raised in a pastor's home preacher's home so this is nothing new to you uh by the way you know folks you're looking at is it the district youth secretary this is the new youth district secretary of the north texas district that was not planned he's like you shouldn't have said that but but you're raised in an anointed home. You understand this. But my daddy said, son, if you don't know what to do, have a prayer line. So I got up and preached and the power of God hit that place and I didn't know what to do with it. So you know what I did? <laughs> Called the prayer line. <laughs> That's what we do. And we had a prayer line and this brother came through when we were laying hands on folks and God, I mean, God was doing stuff and I, I had no clue what was going on. <laughs> Praise God. Holy Ghost falling on that one. I, my God, I don't know how that happened. Keep going. And this one got a blessing or shouting. I don't know how that happened. I'm just, I'm just young and I don't know what's going on. And I just know we're going to have a prayer line and, and I'm going to lay hands on somebody and we'll see what happens. This one man came up and I, I, I laid hands on him and when I did, The Holy Ghost spoke. And the Holy Ghost said, I want you to tell him that I'm going to heal his heart. And he ain't going to have to worry about his heart no more. So you know what I did? Because I'm just smart enough, but still just dumb enough. That's a good place to be right there. Some of y'all too smart. (laughs) We won't talk about the other part. (laughs) Hallelujah. But I just simply said, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
Whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, God told me to tell you everything's going to be all right with your heart. You're not going to have no more issues with your heart. And we went on. He shouted, he danced, and it was months later on Facebook because I'm on there and then I'm off. My wife says, will you make up your mind? I delete it, I get back on. I delete it, I get back on. I mean, I'm talking about. <laughs> so if you get deleted, don't be offended. I'm going through a moment. <laughs> Someone told me, my Lord, how many times are you going to delete me, Brother Winslow? <laughs> and I was back on Facebook <laughs> for a week. And... Uh, Someone inboxed me, and I, I don't get on there, so please, I, if you inbox me and I don't respond, it's nothing. I just don't get on there. I, I, I like to be happy. It's just true. I'm sorry. Some of y'all depress me. I'm sorry. Not y'all. And uh, I, got this, I got this message in the inbox, and he said, Brother Winslow, and we're fixing to close musicians, please come. He said, Brother Winslow, you don't remember me. He said, uh, but almost a year and a half ago, he said, you were in Vicksburg. You were preaching at Brother Talbert's church in Vicksburg. And uh, he said, uh, I came through the prayer line. I remembered that. You never forget your first prayer line or any of the other ones. And uh, I said, yes, sir. And, and he said, uh, or he said, uh, he said, I came through the prayer line. He said, uh, I was in a desperate place. He said, you didn't know it. My pastor didn't even know it. He said, um, but every night when I would go to bed, there was something wrong with my heart couldn't sleep fluttering and just things almost like it would stop and just I would wake up and and just it would feel like I was about to die and I would end up on the floor curled up in a fetal position waiting for a heart attack or waiting for something to take place and crying to God that he would deliver me and couldn't figure out what it was he said and I came through that prayer line he said and you said these words God's going to heal your heart. God's going to take care of you. He said, Brother Winslow, I, I, I didn't tell pastor till months later. He said, but I went home confident in this God I serve. That my giant that was breathing down my neck and telling me this is going to be the last day you live. He said, Brother Winslow, every day I lived thinking it was my last. Are you hearing me, church? Do you understand the fear of having to live thinking I'm going to wake up dead? I'm going to wake up in eternity. This could be my last moment. Every time I tell my children it's done, that this could be it. He said, but when I went home, he said, I crawled in that bed. He said, Lord, if you're able. He didn't say these words, but I want to kind of paraphrase it. What he would say is, this day, this is the day. He said, Brother Winslow, I fell asleep for the first time. In months, in months, in months of living in fear, couldn't sleep. He said, but I slept all through the night. He said, Brother Winslow, it's been a year and a half and I just felt like today was a good day to tell you thank you for listening to the voice of God because I've had no issues with my heart. I want you to stand across this place. I don't, I don't know what you walked in here with. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know the burdens you carry. I don't know the giant you face. 
But I'm telling you, there are some of us who have come to this house and you're tired. Do you hear me? You're tired. You're tired of the enemy coming to you, telling you this is the last day. You're tired of the enemy coming to you and telling you you better start picking out your gravestone because I'm going to destroy you. I'm preaching to some daddies in this house. The enemy's told you you'll never see salvation flow through your family. You've heard it over and over and over and over. And you're saying, preacher, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm tired. I want to tell you the Holy Ghost all week has been telling me if they can just believe if they can just believe that I am here, I'll reach down to where they are and I will empower them. I will strengthen them. Is it all right if I follow the Holy Ghost? just don't feel a, a release I, f I feel like if I just call an altar service right this second that some of you are going to skip right out don't let the don't let the devil deceive you don't let the devil tell you nothing's going to happen Don't say this is another service. I'm telling you, something's here. Something's here. I can see several of you all across. I'm going to tell you how we're going to do this. And we're going to open this altar call in just a moment. But I'm going to tell you something. Right where you are, God's going to move right where you are. Altar team, don't pray for no one yet. I'm telling you, God's in this place. If I were you, are you listening to me? Please don't get weary and tired and ready to go already. Please don't do that. We're in a very divine moment right now. We're in a moment between where someone's Goliath, someone's giant is destroyed, and or someone runs in defeat. We're in a very special moment right now. This is not another service. I don't preach just another service. Bishop doesn't come to this pulpit just to preach another message. If you haven't caught that on, you haven't been here long enough. Bishop comes with a mission. And I'm here to tell you, God is... God is ready, but listen to me. I'm going to talk to someone right now. It's time to take the mask off. It's time, it's time, to, it's time to stop playing games with God. It's time to, to stop letting the, the giant in your life to always dictate how you praise and how you worship. Because I'm just... Brother Jacob, I'm just going to be real honest. It's, we are always afforded another Sunday. I'm trying to reach someone right now. If you, is this okay? I'm trying to reach someone right now. I feel, I feel in the Holy Ghost that God has shifted something, and I'm trying to reach somebody right now. We always think there's another day to fight the giant. We've always got this understanding of this, this way of thinking that there'll always be another Sunday, that we'll come back next Sunday and we'll fight that giant, or I'll, I'll, pick, up the, I'll pick up the sling and the stones and I'll, I'll fight that giant next Sunday. But, but I'm trying to tell someone, there's, you're not always going to have a Sunday. It's not always going to be there. I hope, I, I hope I'm okay right now, but I just, I felt God just shift us completely. 
And I really feel there's a, there's a soul in the balance. I can feel it. There, there's someone's here and, 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 and the enemy is wanting to destroy you. And I'm not talking about steal your financial blessing. I'm not talking about stealing your, your new car or your new house you're praying about. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about the, the giant I'm, I'm speaking directly to is after your soul. Altar team, don't pray for nobody yet. We're not going to let you hide amongst the altar call because God's, God's pointing to someone right now. You've, you, oh. But Tim, I feel a reaping spirit. I, I feel a spirit of reaping. It's totally different than what I was preaching and I wasn't expecting this, but I... Feel a reaping. I'm sorry if you're a guest, come back next Sunday, but I feel a burden. I feel something hit me. It's heavy. Oh, there's a soul in the Dallas First Church, you, you know better. Why are you waiting? You know better. Come on, some of you feel the, you know what you're feeling right now. I shouldn't be the only one feeling this. Don't you let me stand up here by myself and act like you don't know what's going on. Come on, praise team. Don't you leave me on this pulpit by myself and act like you don't know what's going on. Come on, I'm telling someone just, just a few moments, I'm going to let this thing build to a point and then I'm going to release you to hit these altars, but not yet. Because I will not allow you because I'm telling you I know what giant I'm talking about right now I didn't know what it was on service but I know what I'm talking about that there's the giant for your soul it's calling you out and it's telling you I will destroy your soul I will destroy your soul Young people, I pray to God you'd catch on to what I'm telling you and there would be something that would hit you. Come on, I'm telling you, if you feel this, you better, you better catch on to what God's doing right now. Prayer team, get ready. Don't, don't lay hands on nobody yet, prayer team. But I'm going to tell you, prayer team, you better be ready. Come on, I'm telling somebody right now, I would not leave this service. I would not leave this service. Oh, I would not leave this service until I got things right with God. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands. We're about to release you in this altar. Lift up your hands right now. Listen to me. 
altar team, unless you have to, don't pray for no one yet. Hallelujah. Come on, don't get nervous. I know what I'm doing. I'm telling you, this is... We're going to wait till... Some of you are saying, but preacher, I've got, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, and I've got this, and I've got this, and I, I can't let go of this. You better hear this, preacher. There is nothing, nothing, nothing that you can hold on to in this world that is worth missing what God is doing right now. This is it. Come on, this is it. Lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. Come on, we're about to release you. Are you ready? I'm telling you, when we release you to come to these altars and this prayer team and our ministry team prays for you, if you don't get out of that pew, if you stay where you are and you know... Listen, if God's not dealing with you, fine, stay where you are. But if the Holy Ghost is reaching you right now, and you know He is, if you stay in that pew, you better hear this preacher. You may never get an opportunity again. And if I was you, I'd run. I'd run. If you knew what this preacher sees, I would run to these altars. Come on, we're going to open these altars right now. Come on, even if you don't have someone to pray for you, if there's no altar team, that's all right. Fall in the altar. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, make your way all across this place. Come on, there needs to be a breaking. Come on, if the Holy Ghost is dealing with you, do not stay in your pew. Push your way. Come on. 